This is my quick review of a 2017 Chevy Bolt EV. First I'd like to thank Wentworth Chevrolet and Ron Tonkin Chevrolet, both of Portland, Oregon, for providing the vehicles that are shown today's, in today's video. Both the cars shown in this video are um, the Premier Edition, so they're fully loaded and they approximately retail for about $43,000, that's including destination charge and that's before any kind the first I'm going to do a walk around, then I'm going to show you the interior, then I'm going to tell you my driving impressions, and then also my final thoughts. So my first impressions of the vehicle, I couldn't help but notice as I was looking at the car in person for the first time, is the resemblance to a Nissan Leaf. I mean, I own a 2012 Leaf myself, and I've, I've owned it for about a year and a half, so I'm very familiar with the dimensions and the, the view out and just, you know, the overall form factor of the vehicle. And this vehicle, the Bolt, it, it, it's really almost a carbon copy of the Nissan Leaf. I mean, I mean, yes, they changed, you know, it has more conventional looking headlights. It has different taillights. It has, you know, different styling cues. I mean, there's different, you know, different interior design to a certain degree. But I mean, the basic size and shape, it's very much like a Nissan Leaf. It's basically like they just started with that car. And just said, okay, we can make a better Leaf than uh, Nissan can, and we'll just put us a, a 60 kilowatt battery in, instead of a 30 kilowatt, or in my case, my car is a 24 kilowatt. So, you know, they've increased the, the battery size quite a bit, and, um, and it's basically a car of the same size. So it's quite a it's quite a feat of engineering. I mean, for them to do what they've done. I mean, they really took it to the next level, and just kind of did all the kind of made everything fit in a car of the same size. But of course, that kind of leads me to the impression of um, the next two cars that are going to be... Basically, there's going to be three cars that are going to be setting, setting the EV world out apart, advancing the whole technology forward. And that's going to be this car, it's going to be the next generation Nissan Leaf, which will be, the, which will be coming out in September of 2017. And it will be launching in September 2017 and it will be coming out available for sale by the end of, end of the year and then also sometime around the same time to test the Model 3 which is going to be the less expensive Tesla so yeah these three cars the, the three of them are going to be it's going to be an interesting competition it's going to be but all three of them I think there's plenty of room for all three to be successful and I think that all three will be successful they'll each have their own market share and such but the things that really stood out in the interior were the the displays. I mean, very nice, very legible, very customizable. It felt like you had lots of options, lots of information. So you could kind of, if you really want to know a lot of information, it's all right there. And if you don't want that much information, you just want to drive the car. It was pretty easy to just do that too. And of course, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So it has all the, it has all the. All the evolutionary stuff you would expect in a car of this of this vintage 2017. And my favorite feature of the interior was a unique uh, Chevrolet item. Actually, the uh, the video mirror was I thought was really really cool. And I'll describe that a little bit later on my driving impressions. It's nice to see a, a radio dial, you know, for the volume control. And then the the. Uh, the climate control system was also kind of more manual kind of you know dials and buttons and such which I really like that too I think it's some things need to be still you know dials and knobs there's nothing quicker or easier to adjust than that so it's nice to see that they that they kept those features and then I really like the, the the paddle shifter on the back there that's that's what that little thing behind the steering wheel was that was actually like a little a little handbrake that you can actually use to brake the car so we want a little bit extra to reach in and you don't want to like use the, the pedal brake you can kind of just brake with your hand which is really cool some of the negative things they didn't seem to have any kind of way to limit the charging like um as far as the battery like keep keeping it to 90 percent or so you know which is better for the battery to keep it between 10 and 90 percent it didn't seem to be any kind of way that you could control the charge like you know you either fully charge it or you don't fully charge it you have to either manually do it or they, they do have a hilltop feature that's in there that you can click on that and that supposedly will limit it to 95% or so but that other than that that's that's just, just to, to ensure that if you live on top of a hill or something and you want to start the day out by not having a full charge because you because you're going to coast down the hill and so you'll, you'll be regening as you go down that hill 
it's kind of a smart little thing because for people that do live on a hill, such as myself, it's kind of a nice way to start the day because you never want to charge the car up to 100%. You always want to be at around 95 or something. So you do have that regen, so you're not sitting here using the, the friction brake for the first couple minutes of driving. It's nice to get a little bit of power back in the in the car. But other than that, that they don't have anything that you can control the actual the actual charging of the car in detail. Unlike Tesla, which is totally customizable. Um, the other thing that I didn't like too much is like you know this is a fully loaded car, so I'm not sure why there's three blank uh, buttons there on the on the console there it's like you know this is it has all the options so why do you have three blank uh, button areas but that's that's common with a lot of cars so i can't really nitpick on that too much but but uh yeah gen generally generally it seems like pretty nice build quality and um so i, I thought you know it seems you know it's definitely comparable to the leaf i mean in that same kind of kind of economy car but with a lot of electronic technology going on kind of a merger of those two and kind of having that kind of a balance so this is the actual car I took out for a drive um, I went to a different dealership as a customer and just to try to get a different experience and um, so I did not take any video of the car driving it but I did take it for a nice lengthy 15 mile or so uh, test drive so I got a good feel for the car and I'm going to tell you all about it right now so the car actually drives a lot like my Leaf I mean it it, on paper, it's supposedly faster and everything, but I didn't notice a whole heck of a lot of difference when I was driving it. The one thing I really like is the shifter. It allows you to shift into like an L mode, which allows you to like it. It allows you to really increase the regen, and that's the thing that really stood out to me is the regen capability of the car. It was just like it was like driving my Tesla. I mean, it just has strong regen, and plus you have the, the paddle brake on the on the wheel to, to add additional braking. So that was the two things that really stood out to me a lot. Otherwise, it drives a lot like my Leaf. I mean, the handling and such. One thing that's really cool is this video mirror. This is the thing that really stood out when driving. Is it, it totally eliminates your blind spots. It's amazing. I mean, it's just it's just like I was tracking it intentionally. I was just like looking at a car and then watching it go from the side mirror and then for it to show up on the video mirror here. And it's like there's basically no blind spots at all. So that's really cool. That's super cool. I think that should that should appear on that probably will start to appear on other cars. I mean, it, it should it should definitely carry over to other cars. Otherwise, like the interior quality, you know, it's about the same. I mean, it wasn't any rattles or squeaks or anything. It was about the same road noise as my Leaf. I mean, the same uh, quietness or whatever you want to call it. And the truck cargo capacity was about the same. The hatch opening was about the same. I mean, pretty much everything's about the same. There's a little bit of extra room underneath the, on the bottom of the, um, the cargo area which there's nothing in my leaf. There's like a little place for like a spare. Supposedly a real super compact spare might fit down where the charger's located down there, that little storage area. But other than that, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a lot like the leaf. I mean, if you love the leaf, you love this car. I mean, you'll just add, you know, just adding the 200 mile range factor into the equation is what really makes this car, you know, kind of a, kind of a game changer. One of the things I really don't like about this car, as with my Leaf, is that it has a really cheap rear suspension, as shown here. It's a semi-independent uh, trailing beam suspension, very economy car, and just uh, yeah, it's it's not the it's not the best thing in the world, but can't have everything, I guess. I was kind of surprised that the underbody of the car was not as flush. I thought it would have been a lot smoother underneath the car. It's kind of weird that it wasn't. So my final thoughts on the car. I was impressed. You know, it's a, I think it's a, it's a solid quality product, you know, using the LG components, the uh, battery and the motor. It's all LG stuff. And that's a quality company as well. And then to, to stick a 60 kilowatt battery in that compact of a car and make it all fit is actually pretty impressive. So, I mean, I, I definitely think this is a strong contender in the market now. And I think it's definitely going to be very appealing to a lot of people. Now, will I be trading in my Leaf? Probably not. Will I be trading in my Tesla Model S? Absolutely not. I hope you found this video informative, useful, and, or at least somewhat entertaining. And um, so yeah, please comment if you wish. Please like if you like. And if you want, subscribe. There's definitely more to come.